All right, and we're back. This is the Get Your Ass to Work podcast, episode number 39. And today we're talking about serving your clients. Service, because that is the value that you trade your clients in exchange for money. And they pay you for this shit, and we're doing a terrible job. I see real estate agents are as one of like the most selfish industries possible. We do the least amount of work and expect a large amount of money, and that's why there's so many joker agents that are attracted to the real estate world. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that real estate is easy, and I'm not saying that getting a house sold can't be stressful, and most people can't deal with the stress that comes along with houses falling out of escrow and making tough phone calls And that's one of the reasons that it is so hard to make it in real estate. But the level of service sucks. And a lot of it is because people are, agents, are so selfish and they're so nervous and they're so scared that they cannot properly advise, protect, and be an advocate for their client. Here's one of the ways that we are not good as an industry. Here's one of the ways that we are not good in in protecting our clients. Letting your client overprice their home just to get a listing. You know when you go on a competitive listing appointment that there's four other agents there and three of them will overprice that property just to get the listing and then they will grind their clients down on their price until they finally get it into the ballpark where the home's going to sell. But what did you really do? You wasted their time, you gave them false beliefs, you totally didn't advise them to the best of your ability, and you did it because you're fucking selfish and because you don't want to have a hard conversation and because you think if you come in with a price at where it's really going to sell, that someone else is going to come in and they're going to price the property ahead of you and they're going to win the listing just based on price. And let's be real, that shit happens. Yes, it happens all the time. There are people out there who will just pick the agent who tells them whatever price it was that they're looking for. But there are also plenty of people, I mean home sellers out there, that will call out bullshit on you if you come in with an overinflated price. So, guys, this happens because we are too weak as agents to properly advise someone of the realistic price it'll sell for in fear of losing the listing. But what's going to happen? You're going to put that property out there and then you're going to waste their time. They're going to make extra mortgage payments. Their property's going to sit on the market for 60, 80, 150 days. And they're only going to get one offer. It's going to be a shitty offer. It's going to have sat on the market so long it's going to get stale. And then they're going to get less money for their home in the end but you're going to cash a paycheck and you know it works because people, once they sign on the line, they have a really hard time calling the agent and backing out of the listing. Not everyone, but a lot of people do. And there are people out there who have to sell the home. They have to move. And in that case, basically they're bent over a barrel and you're the one who's behind them watching their back or not watching their back. So look, Another way that agents are doing wrong by their clients is letting their ego get in the way. Man, egos flare up in real estate like no other fucking industry. Everybody thinks they're a rock star in this industry. Everyone thinks they've got all these negotiation skills. And here's what ends up happening. You get somebody who thinks they're some fucking hotshot agent. They've got a huge attitude. They're not willing to work with you. They think that by grinding out the other side of the deal for every penny they can get, they're actually doing them their client a service when they're not. They're actually screwing their client because the other side's going to get pissed off. They get overworked. They get stressed out. And then the deal comes to a halt and falls apart over a $20 used fucking washing machine. I've seen this happen so many fucking times. I could tell you stories from here to the moon. I've seen deals fall apart for used lawn equipment, barbecues, washing machines, refrigerators, shit that doesn't even matter, chandeliers, drapes, curtains, 
$40 curtains you can get at Bed Bath & Beyond. Deals are falling out of escrow because an agent has over-negotiated and has driven the other side so fucking thin and so crazy that they say, nope, we are not selling our home to these people. We don't give a fuck what they come back with. We are done with them. They don't deserve our house. And, you know, a lot of this does come down to real estate agents' egos, man. I mean, they want to be the man or the woman and be in charge and push people and, you know, get the result that they are looking for. Sometimes, man, my ego's running wild. I'll be the first to admit I've got an ego in some of these deals. And I'm like, fuck this agent. I'm like, they are not getting away with this bullshit. I'll even tell my client. I'm like, hey, my ego's getting the best of me right now. I wouldn't let them get away with this, but the decision is yours and I'm here to do what's best for you. So I will keep my mouth shut. If you want to go the other direction, I'll do my best to make this deal happen. And sometimes you got to swallow your fucking pride and let the other side win when you know that they're fucking pieces of shit. And they're they're just playing dirty and they're just being obnoxious and the other agents just being rude. Guys, this this shit really happens. So oh man, you gotta let your ego get out of the way and you gotta keep your client's best interest in your mind at all times because at the end of the day, it's not about you, it's not about what you want, it's not about your paychecks, because if you keep that in your mind all the time and you're just a me, me, me agent and there's plenty of you out there, when when you turn into that me, me, me agent and just list any property at any price just to get a sign into the yard, knowing that it's not going to sell just so you can get some buyer leads off of it because you don't have any other fucking listings, well, you're, you're fucking your clients. In that, in that case, you're totally fucking your clients whoever whoever you're doing this to you're wasting their time you're wasting your time and eventually you're going to lose and this this karma more or less will come back to you and bite you in the ass at some point and usually what happens is agents who do that kind of stuff are typically lazy they don't sell a lot of homes so they're going to struggle their whole real estate career anyway and they're not going to be able to go out there and get better business. So look, here, here's what to do when you have a tough client who say, you know that you have to protect your clients sometimes from themselves. And sometimes they're the ones who are trying to over-negotiate. Sometimes they are the ones who are pushing for a price that is so far out of the ballpark. You know, you don't have a fucking chance in hell of selling the property. Here, here's what you do. You give them your best advice, you show them documentations of what is selling in a neighborhood, you you give them examples, you show them situations where overpriced properties will sit on the market for a certain number of days, and you know what? Sometimes they're not going to listen to you, and that's okay, as long as you've given them your very best advice and your very best knowledge and your very best analysis then you can decide whether or not you're going to take that listing or whether or not you're going to you know, keep a listing that's overpriced. If they're not willing to listen to you, but you've given them your best, you've done your job. As opposed to just letting them price it any way they want just so that you get a listing and they don't go interview somebody else because that's what most fucking agents do. That's what a lot of agents do, especially agents who are going after for sale by owners and expireds. I know because I go to these multiple agent appointments and have to battle out why the agent who came before said that the price was going to be $30,000 more than what the fucking home was just listed for and somehow they were magically going to sell it because you know you know that's bullshit and you know that's not going to happen and then you have to justify, you have to convince and you have to point out, you have to point out all of the information that's going to lead them to come to their own conclusion that the agent who was there before you that said it would sell for $30,000 more than your price was full of shit. They have to come to their own conclusion based on pure evidence why 
you're the agent who's telling them the truth that is trustworthy and is going to get the job done versus the other fuckstick who just came in and came out with some bullshit out of the side of their neck. So guys, you have to be an advocate for your clients. You have to make sure that you're there to protect and be an advocate for your clients, even when you're trying to protect them from themselves. And this will lose you some deals. This will lose you some deals. Absolutely, you will lose deals and you will lose people and clients over this. But did you really? And I'll ask you that question. Like, did you really lose a deal because you told somebody the truth? I mean, look, here's the other side of that. The other agent will come in and they'll overprice the property and then they'll grind them down on that. And it's hard. It, it pisses you off when somebody comes in and wins a listing just based on price. And then they grind them down on that price and they actually get the property sold. Because let's face it, agents, you know that shit works. You know, you know that works because we see it all the time. There are agents in the marketplace here in Reno, Nevada that are fucking known for doing that. I can think of them, I can see their little fucking faces in my mind right now of the agents who are known for doing that. And guess what? You can't take your, I told you the truth to the bank and cash that in. But that agent who fucking came up with some bullshit will cash a check and will take it to the bank. Like I said before, their reputations will suffer. They're typically lazy and they typically aren't going to do well in the business anyway. There are a few who do that on a regular basis and who do sell a lot of homes. But you know what? People call them out on their bullshit all the time. The other agents know who it is. The people end up knowing who it is and that shit gets out to the internet and eventually, you know, they don't have the best of reviews. So guys, make sure you're doing right by your clients. Your job is to serve and to protect or something. I don't know. It sounds like a something written on the side of a police car, but it's the fucking truth. That's what you signed up for. It's a service job. It's a service industry. Make sure you're doing your best for your clients and you have their interests in your mind, not yours. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you ever have any questions, I know some of you agents locally have reached out to me, which is fucking awesome. Um, I love talking to you guys. And what's interesting is, I mean, we're, we're located here in Reno and I get a lot of people calling from like Gardnerville, Carson City, Fernley agents call me just to ask, you know, just basic prospecting questions because I'm a telephone prospector. I'm on the phones every single morning. And I think it's fucking cool that I put this podcast out and we've got agents outside of Reno listening to it, man. It's awesome. You guys can uh, you guys can schedule a time to speak with me if you have any questions on uh, prospecting, expired for sale by owners. That's what we do. That's what we do best. Um, my personal cell phone number is 775 Four four zero seven zero seven eight, and give me a call. Leave me a message on that line, or you can book an appointment to speak with me, and I'll give you a call. www.danielpuzz.work. So it's just my name. Dot work, as in get your ass to work. And with that, thank you for listening to episode thirty nine, and we'll see you guys next week.